Hello everyone, my name is Robius, and welcome to a new episode of Assassin's Creed The Real History. In this series, I compare events in a selected character's life within one of the Assassin's Creed games to the actual history the individual lived through. As always, beware of major story spoilers. For today's episode, we will be exploring the history of Steed Bonnet. As is common for this series, we will begin by going over his pre-game history to better understand his background, then his in-game history, covering the period in which he appears in Assassin's Creed, and lastly we will be comparing the events in the game to the real history behind Steed Bonnet. Bonnet's pre-game history began with his birth in 1688 in Bridgetown, Barbados. Unlike many of his fellow pirates, he was actually a local to the Caribbean. When his father died in 1694, he was given the family estate south of Bridgetown and he later married Mary Allenby, with whom he had three sons and a daughter. Although he ran a respectable business and participated in the Barbados Militia, rising to the rank of Major, Bonnet soon decided he wanted to become a pirate despite having no seafaring experience. This would technically represent the moment where we first met Steed in AC4, as he was a jolly merchant who was encouraged towards a life of piracy by Edward Kenway. Will you stay here long? For a few weeks, yes. Then back to Barbados, to the tedium of domesticity. Don't settle for tedium. Sail for Nassau. Live life as you see fit. <laughs> Haven't I heard that Nassau is prawling with pirates? Seems a very tawdry place. Not tawdry, liberated. Oh, God. That would be an adventure. Historically, at this point, he bought a sloop that he named the Revenge, instead of stealing one like most pirates did, and gathered an experienced crew that he paid wages, instead of splitting plunder portions. Unfortunately, he was not very respected by his veteran crew, despite the fact that they successfully raided multiple ships. After leaving his family and his previous life behind, Steed eventually decided he wanted to go to Nassau to join his fellow pirates. However, on his way, he was caught in a fight with the Spanish Man of War. He succeeded in escaping, but the revenge was badly damaged and Steed, along with most of his surviving crew, were seriously wounded. When he got to Nassau, he replaced his fallen crew members and added more guns to his sloop. In Nassau, Bonnet met Blackbeard, whom he made the temporary captain of the revenge while he was injured. Under the command of the far more battle-hardened pirate, Bonnet's ship met great success as they plundered ships all around the American coastline. They eventually returned to the Caribbean, where with the help of other pirates, they succeeded in capturing La Concorde, which Blackbeard made into his new flagship. This segment is rather differently shown in Assassin's Creed 4, as Blackbeard already had the Queen Anne's Revenge in his command, and Steed was made a crew member where he would learn the ways of piracy. However, returning to the real history, sometime in 1717, Blackbeard and Bonnet went their separate ways. When they reunited a few months later, Blackbeard took command of Bonnet's ship, and the inexperienced pirate's crew turned on him and joined Blackbeard. Bonnet was then made a guest aboard the Queen Anne's Revenge instead of being the captain of his own ship. When the Queen Anne's Revenge ran aground, Blackbeard and Bonnet went to Bath to accept the king's pardon for pirates. After receiving this clearance, Blackbeard departed immediately while Bonnet was preparing the required paperwork to have his ship, the Revenge, all cleared. After finishing the paperwork, Bonnet returned for his vessel, only to find that Blackbeard had beached most of their former crew and plundered the Revenge and a few other ships for all their valuables. Gathering what crew he could from the marooned men, Bonnet prepared his ship and began looking for Blackbeard. Learning that he was in Okrakok Inlet, Steed set for vengeance, but he could not find his traitor of a former partner. Unfortunately for Bonnet, he would never see Blackbeard again. However, since Blackbeard had stolen all of their food and supplies, Bonnet was confronted with a choice. Either try and gain them back slowly and legally, or nullify his pardon by returning for piracy. Opting for an alternative, Bonnet adopted the alias of Captain Thomas, and renamed his ship the Royal James. Using this fake identity, he successfully returned to piracy, plundering many ships, and keeping two of them, the Francis and the Fortune, to increase his fleet. At this point, Bonnet became more of a real pirate and split his plunder share with his crew instead of paying them wages. However, when hurricane season came to pass, Bonnet decided to moor his fleet in the Cape Fear River to wait it out. By August, word of Bonnet's hiding place had reached the governor of South Carolina, who sent Colonel William Rett and two sloops to hunt him down. Although Bonnet initially mistook Rhett's ships as merchants, when he realized the danger of the two armed vessels, filled with 130 men, he needed to act quickly. Having only 46 pirates under his command, Bonnet took them all aboard the Royal James and planned to escape the next morning, as night had fallen and it would be dangerous for his ship to escape in this tight passage when they couldn't see. That night, he wrote a message to the governor, telling him that he would burn every single ship in Charleston Harbor as revenge. The next morning, a battle took place which resulted in Bonnet and Rhett's ships running aground. They fought for hours until the tide freed Rhett's ships and the heavily outnumbered and immobilized crew of the Royal James were forced to surrender. Bonnet and his crew were arrested and brought to Charleston. After three weeks of waiting for trial, Bonnet and his sailing master, David Herricutt, escaped with the help of a local merchant. 
A bounty was put on his head and soldiers were sent out looking for him. They found a small boat and managed to make it to Sullivan Island, but Bonnet was soon recaptured by Rhett while Harricot was killed. Surprisingly, as he waited for his trial, uprisings in his favor started all over Charleston and the government feared to be overthrown there was so much support for Bonnet. When his trial did come, Bonnet attempted to act as his own defense, without aid, and cross-examined witnesses and called his own, but to no avail. Like most of his crew, he was sentenced to death for piracy. Although his execution was delayed seven times, he was hanged at White Point Garden in the city of Charleston on December 17, 1718. In summary, there are many different elements to Steve Bonnet's life which were not portrayed in AC4. Firstly, the game depicted him as a naval merchant before he turned to piracy, which was not the case since he had no seafaring experience prior to his criminal life. Secondly, Assassin's Creed depicted Edward as part of his inspiration to becoming a pirate, when in reality it is assumed that he turned to crime due to a displeasure of his regular life. Thirdly, the game showed Bonnet joining Blackbeard's crew as a crewman on the Queen Anne's Revenge, when in reality he lent Blackbeard his first large vessel, which led him to gain the Queen Anne's Revenge on a later date. Fourthly, Bonnet and Blackbeard did not leave on good terms like in the game. Instead, Blackbeard tricked him and stole everything he had, leaving him with almost nothing but his vessel, the Revenge. And lastly, although it isn't said, but perhaps just not shown, although Bonnet was known as a gentleman pirate, he was not a pushover for all of his life. In fact, he became a very successful pirate in his own right following his separation from Blackbeard. Even though the real life of Steed Bonnet is rather differently depicted in Assassin's Creed 4, his personality is still very well demonstrated in his early days, before and when starting his criminal career. On that note, we have finished another episode of Assassin's Creed The Real History. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you did, I highly recommend you try out one of the Assassin's Creed games. Thank you all for watching. Please leave any suggestions for future characters you'd like me to cover in the comment section below. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all in a future historical episode.